good communication there, so we're good to go. It's an airport for some of the most experienced pilots and some of the newest ones. R.L. Jones near Riverside. This is where the training starts. We, we start, at, you know, actually the first lesson of our course is in the simulator. Flying lessons begin right here with Spartan Aviation. So, Ryan Gertzen says the simulator helps prepare new pilots for all kinds of situations before they go airborne. Let's say we're flying here. What happens if you see a drone right there? Worst case scenario? I mean, worst case scenario, it's either, it's, it's, a, it's a quick reaction. You know, it might be something, you know, where you do something like this. Including drones that are flying in their path illegally at altitudes strictly forbidden by the FAA. Those rogue drones endanger pilots, aircrafts, and people on the ground below, and it happens a lot. 1,700 feet. We've yep. seen reports of drones flying this high. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, it gives you, so when you look out and see, it's not that we're that high, but it gives you, I mean, 3,500 feet. You know, you said, see, that's, 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 that's way really? higher than this, right? Since September 2015, there have been at least five drones spotted near Jones Airport, some flying hundreds of feet higher than they're supposed to. And it does not take much to cause an airplane to crash, and a drone is plenty big enough, so. Just how high are drones allowed to fly? The max is 400 feet from where you were standing. So what does 400 feet look like? The KTL water tower is 200 feet, so if we double it, that's how high drones can fly. But now there are new reports of drones in Tulsa flying five times higher than that, right where all the flight training is happening. It's thousands and thousands of airplanes are using this same airspace, and, and the last thing that a pilot thinks to see is a drone. It's not just happening in Tulsa, but all over Oklahoma. Drones have been spotted flying anywhere from 3,000 to 5,000 feet high. That's high enough to start being a major threat to commercial aircrafts as well as private planes. Hear that plane in the air. First thing I want to do is look and see where he's at. Ah, he looks like he's above 400 AGL. Todd Ruffin with Midwest Drone Productions says rogue drones don't just threaten his business. They're a reckless and stupid menace that can get people killed. And we don't know what's going to happen if one of these contacts an aircraft. Maybe nothing. Maybe a lot, you know. Ruffin says even for jobs like this one out at Big Cabin, it's rare he'd take his drone up to 400 feet. The problem with the industry right now is nobody's regulating it. They're, they're issuing all these rules. The FAA is rolling out all these rules for us drone pilots to follow, but they're not enforcing them. Back at Jones, for even the most experienced pilot, if a drone pops up out of nowhere, it's already too late. Hit the propeller, go through the windshield, Hit both, and, and by the way, if it hit both of my pilots, they're not living, not, or at least not managing to get the airplane on the ground. During school, pilots prepare for all kinds of potential issues. The list includes birds, engine failure, and now drones.